Production. We're here with Pioneer Anomaly. Yes, yes, yes. We are doing an interview here at Primal Note Studio. Primal Note Productions. Check it out. Uh, what, what's the website here, man? Uh, ben. <laughs> uh, Primalnote.com. Primalnote.com. You can tell I'm very nervous here, Ben. I'm just trying my best. But we got Matt here too. Matt, say hi. Hey. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's Matt, the bass player. We've got Ben here. He does guitars and vocals for Pioneer Anomaly, my friends. And so, yeah, it's interview time. Anybody right now tuning in, watching, doesn't know what this is. You know, this is this is Quaker Kid Productions, you know, 20 Scene Tube Interviews. This is, you know, we do an interview for our YouTube special, 20 Scene Tube. You check it out. 20 Scene Tube is the channel on the YouTube. But if you want to see the videos, they are also linked on the website, 20scene.com. Again, that's a, that's a website where we post our, our art. Again, it's mostly me, your boy, peanut butter, paralegal, okay? Mon Sef Munir, as I call myself. And uh, yeah, I know. I mean, we, we do zines, we do art video, you know, stuff like that. And uh, uh, specifically, a, a music editorial called 20 Scene. All right. Now, that is uh, a music editorial where I go, you know, cover shows, live music shows across the city. And I, uh, you know, threw, threw in some, uh, you know, variety art stuff in there poetry, short stories, etc., articles and stuff these days, even interviews and print. But uh, we got, again, Ben and, and, and Matt here from Primal Note. And uh, specifically, Pioneer Anomaly. They're the band that appeared on uh, 20 Scene. And so, like, they were in, in print on 20 Scene. You can see the scans on the website. Like I said, 20scene.com. So, moving right along. Ben, Matt, why don't you guys pass the mic around, tell me what and who Pioneer Anomaly is. Um, okay, so what? Um, we're a space punk band, so that's, um, I guess the, the way we kind of describe it is, is uh, aggressive and, and fast and heavy, but then also ambient and trippy, kind of psychedelic, kind of a mesh of those two worlds. Um, and uh, who we are currently, we're myself uh, and Matt and then our guitar player, other singer Jay, who's not here at the moment. Uh, and we're currently on the search for a drummer right now, so we've got a few people standing in when we need them, but right now it's, uh, it's the three of us. Ah. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, Matt said Ben nailed it. So that is Pioneer Anomaly. I freaking love this band, I'm telling you, amazing stuff. I, I, I really like, you know, the, the vibes that they, they channel with, with their work and stuff, man, I'm telling you. And, and, and like, it, it's it's, you know, Interesting when, when I think about it because you know Ben you you, you were uh, talking about you know like psychedelic space punk that that, that sort of stuff and, and, and like so I'm gonna press you a little bit more and say like if, if you had to use three other words that you haven't used yet to describe Pioneer Anomaly you know maybe three or four would give me give me give me some something you know and I'm not saying that necessarily anything uh, genre based I, I know you guys are, are, are out there like experimental and stuff like that like give, give me some some some, some words. Um, well, I think, I mean, if I were to use like, specifically three words, I mean, I don't know if they, both, if they all have to be descriptive words, but, um, acting on impulse. Ooh. Because that's basically, like, that's kind of the other side of our band, is, like, we do a lot of, like, writing and, you know, um, crafting songs, but then there's a big element of what we do, which is just kind of letting it go and, and feeling out the music, you know, and, uh, a lot of jamming and improvisational kind of stuff, um, uh, and that's starting to blend in with our songwriting. So that's kind of like our, the foundation of what we do kind of starts off at that improvisational jamming kind of stuff. So uh, for me, at least when I think of what we do, it's very much like I don't try to overthink it. I just kind of let it happen. So acting on impulse. Nice. Yeah, I like that. Acting on impulse. And that's like, you know, music for sure, for sure. 
uh, my boy Phil, we did an interview with that guy. He will tell you it, it, it's all about repetition. It's just repetition. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's impulse, right? That's re repetition, exactly that, right? And, and so, like, I, yeah, man. Um, I, I really like, you know, thematically what you guys do, too. You know, it seems like uh, you put a lot of thought and effort into your production and stuff like that, which is awesome. Uh, and, and so, like, like, I get a lot of a lot of like NASA vibes and just like you know science like maybe like like almost almost like blotted science. You guys kind of almost have like a metal band kind of like aesthetic, right? right. <laughs> and 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 I, and I really dig that. And um and so I did have a question for you that I, you know just to bring up some things that you guys made me think about with with your themes and and and, and the sort of spaciness of your music. So uh, um I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot this one at Matt. Okay, you you look like a, a handyman, Matt. Uh, you ever build a DIY rocket back in the day? You know what I'm saying? Like one of those cardboard rockets that... Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, I, I'm telling you. I, I, listening to you guys' stuff, I was re I was remembering just like, yeah, that. Those little those little cardboard rockets, you know, that, that had the parachutes in the top and stuff like that, right? Like... Yeah. There's that little man on top. Yeah, yeah, the parachute guy, the, 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 the army, yeah. army soldier looking oh, yeah. dude. Yeah, oh man. That's, that's good stuff. But, uh, oh, another one. This one's for you, Ben. Okay. Uh, uh, have you ever used a telescope? Um, yeah, actually. Um, not for a while. I think the last one was a few years ago uh, in Newfoundland, actually. Um, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, because you're really far away from any kind of noise pollution or light pollution. So you can see really, really far. Um, yeah. But definitely. Oh man, yeah, that's that's yeah. Like I, I was I, listening to you, to you guys stuff. I, I remember like uh, the first time I I, I, I looked in a, in a telescope. It was uh, in in the states in Indiana there, and and, and yeah, it was again like little light pollution, right? Because I was in Bloomington, and it's like a city in the in the forest, pretty much like in the woods and stuff like that. And so like like you can when you when you get a clear shot of the sky, like you can see clear. And uh, we were looking at the moon, and I remember my even with my glasses, I could see like just like craters on the moon and stuff. I was like, whoa! And this was me at like six years old or something, you know, seven years old. So like, yeah, I mean, it, I I love that your music can can bring that out thanks to like the the hard work you guys put into your production and everything like that, right? Um, so yeah, I know. But moving along, um, for for those who do not know. Pioneer Anomaly, a.k.a. the Pioneer Effect. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about the band. I'm talking about uh, uh, some lore here around around the term Pioneer Anomaly. It's it, it connected to the term Pioneer Effect. And it's, you know, it, it, it's essentially the deviation from predicted accelerations on, on the trajectories of the Pioneer 10 and 11 satellite that NASA launched into space uh, after they had passed about uh, 20 astronomical units, about three kilometers from Earth, on their way out of the solar system, you know, uh, so there was there was a, a a anomaly that was going on there that, that scientists over over time had to address and, and, and solve. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to ask you um, guys if, if like uh, that was connected to uh, the the albums, you know, uh, Al Algorithm Existence Volume One and Two, you know, because like I found that uh, uh, like there, there's kind of like a through line almost, like in terms of, of uh, the, the, like fact that their uh, um, two albums, kind of like Pioneer Ten and Eleven, right. you know what I'm saying? Like almost yeah, I never like. Thought about it that way. Yeah, I mean, because you you don't do vocals in in those in those albums, right? So it's kind of it is a little bit different from what you guys are normally like, I guess, live and stuff like that. But then at the same time you know, Pioneer 10, 11, just the, the themes of like, you know, the people calculating the, the anomaly between the two and stuff like that. Like, are, are you guys doing this? Was that algorithmic was existence an experiment <laughs> yeah. on society? <clears throat> um, we can't talk about that. <laughs> if, if Ben talks about it, he'll have to kill me. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, so yeah, no, like uh, I, just, I just wanted to note that because yeah, that that was exciting, exciting thing for me in, in, in researching for this interview and stuff like that. And um, yeah, uh, so there was now now if I if I remember correctly, in in uh, um, 
algorithmic existence volume uh, one, you had um, a song called Beans on there. Now I have to ask you because my friend, my friend Justice, he has a Facebook page dedicated to Beans. So this is you're actually you're, this is a very serious thing, Beans. And so I want to know why you named that song Beans. So it, it's actually Bean. Um, Bean? Yeah, yeah, singular. It's so all the names on Algorithmic One and Two are astronauts who uh, were part of the Apollo program. Oh yeah. yeah! See, that's what I wanted to get. Right? Like, being being that they're yeah. instrumental, there wasn't like a like a lyrical theme to any of them. So coming up with a name, I didn't want to just do like Untitled One and Untitled Two. I, I, I don't want to be that like that simplified. Um, so so in keeping with the 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 space themes, the NASA themes, uh, I thought that was a good way to go because there's a lot of different astronauts that were involved in that program. So it gives us a lot of uh, a lot of names to choose from. And I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to remember, they're, they're sequential, so I think it's like from first to last. Um, actually, it's, it's even more specific now that I remember. These are all people who actually been on the, uh, who touched foot on the moon. Oh, okay, uh, in, in, yeah. in order of which ones touched. So the first algorithmic song was the first uh, astronaut on the moon. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's the significance. So it's just like, yeah, chronologically. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Wow. Though I think, I think though we also reverted to, um, because I don't, I, yeah, this is a while ago they named these songs, so I'm trying to remember now. Um, but I think some of them are actually some of the people who were just in orbit of the moon. So I think there's only so many who actually went on to right? the moon. That's right. Right? Weird. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that was kind of once we covered everyone who was on the moon, that it was kind of like the next step back. So everyone who had been to orbit around the moon, because uh, there were astronauts who, who stayed in orbit while people were on the moon and then mm. came back up. So, but yeah, essentially people who were involved in the in the, the uh, Apollo program is, is where those are, names are coming from. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's that's those are the kind of like tidbits I like to get out there in the interviews, right? I mean, the the, the interviews are for the for the real, you know, diehard nerdy types, you know, who are just digging for what they can, any information they can get. And that's, that's what I love is like, you know, I'm sure you guys can appreciate the out there spacey concept of like a time capsule, right? That's kind of the kind of what. 20 scene has been to me right uh and stuff like that right and archiving exactly yeah. exactly an archive is what ben said here and so um yeah um i uh i believe you recorded algorithmic existence volume two uh at, at uh catbox studios now that came out in, in uh, uh was it 2020 yeah, that was 2020. Yeah, yeah. So um, that was entirely a catbox. No, actually, not all of it. Not right. All of it. It's it's a combination. Well, tell tell me tell me about your your experience there at Catbox and 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 recording that album. I also yeah yeah go right ahead go right. Ahead. Yeah, so Catbox um at the uh, kind of to bring it back um at the kind of early days of the pandemic, our the rehearsal space we had originally, which was over in the stockyards, uh, closed up, and we were kind of. Um, stuck in my, basically we practiced at my girlfriend's condo with electric instruments and, and doing it all through headphones. Uh, and uh, towards the fall of 2020, uh, a friend of mine, uh, an engineer named Siegfried Meyer, he had a studio that we had done some of our other singles at the year prior called Catbox, which was out in an industrial complex outside Cambridge, just kind of in the middle of nowhere, really rough. And the way he described it to me originally was like a rough kind of punk rock hole in the wall kind of studio, you know? Um, and so in, in the fall of 2020, he was renting out like chunks of time to other engineers. So we were renting kind of like, I think it was what we were doing was like one weekend a month. So we'd go in on the Friday night, get all set up. And then we had Saturday and Sunday to record. Um, so that's where we did, um, we did a couple of the tracks that are on algorithmic two. Um, but that's actually where we recorded our album, and I'm going to now butcher the pronunciation now that I know how to pronounce it properly, uh, Ephemerides. Um, that's actually where we re recorded that album, more so than, than the algorithmic stuff. Um, algorithmic 2, the first two tracks were done at Catbox, but uh, the rest of the album, um, I believe that was actually done at Front Street. Um, 
the first algorithm was done majority there. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, that, that was exactly no, what, no, I, no, what first, I was going to ask. The first algorithm was done actually at our first rehearsal space. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. So so the first oh, oh, yeah. so the first yeah. algorithm yeah. existence was done in 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 your in your recording uh, studio room there in at the stockyards. In the, in the stockyard. So yeah, now, really now, rough. That's uh, the space we shared with Diamond Weapon. Okay, you were recording with Diamond Weapon there. That's amazing. Love that band, by the way. Did an interview with them in, in 20 Scene in Print about post-hardcore. Amazing band. Great guys. Uh, they played North by Northeast recently. Congratulations, Lewis. All, all you guys. Adam boys. But yeah, no. Um, algorithmic Existence uh, Volumes 2, though, even had a couple of recordings at, at Catbox Studio. Uh, so Catbox and, uh, and uh, at our space on uh, Front Street. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, um, yeah, because that the interesting thing I, I found about those two albums was just like, you know, the tone setting. Oh, no, I am totally wrong. I am totally wrong. You're going to have to, have to edit this. I'm realizing now if the whole last few years have been a blur with the whole pandemic and, and all this stuff. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, um, so actually, Algorithmic 2 uh, is also largely the stockyards. Uh, rehearsal space, right? Right. I'm just thinking we uh, we did that video for Cernan, uh, and that that was the actual video we recorded. We had the the cameras rolling during that session, so I was able to get a video out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, one. correction. Yeah. So Algorithmic Two is uh, partially at the cat box and partially at the stockyards. Um, it was from the Algorithmic Two, the first two tracks on that were from the session that we did Caterpillars and Politics and Battling. Yeah, yeah, sorry, wow, everything's coming back. <laughs> and make friggin' noise, and we did. You know, and that's, I mean, it sounds corny, but that's exactly what it is. I mean, I, I can barely remember a lot of the stuff on those albums, because it was literally just all of us on the floor, and kick it in the ass, and get out. And yeah. Yeah, um, so like, we're... The recording of it was, was about the same, but um, there was a progression between Algorithmic 1 and 2, which was on Algorithmic 1. Uh, that one was literally super rough mixes, just instrumental, no vocals, no... Like, some of them were songs that we we may have jammed once or twice, but a lot of it was stuff that we were literally making up Riffs on the spot. Riffs that we jammed once or twice? Yeah, because yeah. all of these kind of stem from the fact that for Pioneer, um, a lot of the way that we operate is... When we get to our rehearsal space and set up, we like to just kind of let it go for the first, sometimes up to an hour, where we just jam and feel things out and get loose. Then we'll move on and we'll practice our set and that kind of stuff. But we like to have these moments where we just kind of, often it starts with someone will just be noodling around as we're getting set up. And as each of us get our stuff in order, we just kind of join in. Uh, and so we got to a point with both our rehearsal spaces that we were recording every time that we were there. Um, whether we were playing our set or we were jamming. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I, because I, I, I love recording, right? So, we would have just all the mics set up every time we went in, and we, I'd record everything. And then, you know, in the, the weeks and stuff in between, I would listen back and, and, you know, hear, I'd take all the good spots and kind of set them on a playlist. And eventually, I had all these songs that they weren't songs that we had written out or practiced, but I thought they sounded cool. And I wasn't sure what to do with them because I didn't think we could recapture the same energy if we tried to force ourselves to redo them. Um, so I just basically was like, well, I mean, I like listening to them myself, so I'm just going to pop them up on Spotify as, as in a, a kind of, um, what's the, like, a, it's, um, oh, there's a word. Aggregating? No, um, no, no, um, I can't think of the word though, like a collection of things, right? An anthology. Yeah, oh, like an anthology okay. series, right? Yeah. So that was kind of like, of all the things we had recorded up to that point, that was the the stuff I thought was good, and that became volume one. And then volume two came about, similarly, we had all this stuff that we had been recording in, in our rehearsal space and at, at the cat box. Uh, and the difference between the two is on the second one, I actually did a bunch of overdubs where I added synthesizer tracks, or I redid some, well, not redid, I, I kept everything in, but sometimes I would layer on extra guitar parts, because mm. uh, I wanted to kind of, I wanted each algorithmic to be a little different. I didn't want to just keep doing the same, like here's a bunch of stuff that we kind of quickly recorded. I wanted there to be kind of like each volume, it becomes a little bit more in focus, where now there's 
a bit better production going on because as we developed our rehearsal spaces the production got better because we were you know using more mics or positioning things better and making the room sound better or by the time we were at Front Street, we were using in-ear monitors and, you know, mixing everything ahead of everything, uh, ahead of recording, so that when we would record, it, we could just play it right back and it would sound good as it was. Um, so it just kind of goes into our the process of how we do things uh, as a band, and I wanted to capture those as kind of a separate piece, but also have them evolve over time. Um, we, we were working on bits of an algorithmic three, but man, we have so much recorded audio from, from that year. Uh, like literally like days worth of music that, that I've pulled up, uh, aside that, that are all jams. And, um, we did attempt to do one where we had jammed a song and then we went back to the studio a second time and all of us overdubbed at the same time basically so we played extra guitar parts extra bass part our drummer at the time switched to doing hand percussion and we tried to just do a separate thing and layer it on top and it's, oh, it's an interesting exper idea. experiment i don't know if i like it yeah, or not but i might want to try to recreate it again in the future where, where it's kind of like you get the 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 sound of overdubbing but at the same time we're doing it together so there's still that energy we're still playing off of each other you know yeah. so absolutely great to hear that man Dude, like honestly and, and like it, I, I like I like algorithmic existence one and two especially because it's like it's 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 like pioneer anomaly with lifting weights at the gym you know what I'm saying it's like it's like you guys just like pumping iron or something or like you know like like really just like uh, uh, building uh, you know your 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 sound like and, and that's that's what I'm saying is great about it it's not like those albums sound so radically different from you know your, your stuff that you guys uh, uh, write and record like a uh, um, ephem ephemerides. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I know, like Ephemerides 2.0, and that was, that was, that was 2021, so like, that would have been a full, what, like, two years past the, 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 you know, post there of Algorithmic Existence 1, Yeah. right, and, and, and like, so it, it's, it, to me, it feels like, you know, you, you guys kind of like, built a foundation sort of thing with those, with those albums, it, right. it, it, if, if at all, just for the, for you guys, you know, in, in playing with each other and, and getting comfortable and enjoying what you're doing. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's like, it's, it's great to see people doing that. Right. Like, and, and, um, yeah, definitely stoked on that. Um, so moving right along, uh, uh, I believe now you have Primal Note Studios, Primal Note Productions. Uh, and so, like, uh, you can record ha as much as you want now, which yeah, is, yeah. makes sense for why you have a lot of, like, days of recording. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, how is it, how is that opening been? Like, just tell, tell me a bit more about, yeah, Primal yeah, Productions yeah. and the studio and everything. Uh, Whoa. Um, yeah, so, kind of to give you the, the, the genesis of this whole thing is that we had our space at Front Street where... We had been doing our YouTube series from where we were bringing bands in and filming them. And then that was at a rehearsal factory, which uh, as of uh, November 2022, gave us the notice that they were closing up the next month, basically. Uh, and having bounced around from our old rehearsal space to my girlfriend's condo to a studio in Cambridge and then finally to Front Street, where within like two, three years, you know, we were getting sick of bouncing around, so we thought, let's just get our own place and, and do our own thing, you know, because at least then if we have to close up a space, it's of, our, it's of our own accord, you know, we're not going to beholden to some other person to decide that they're, you know, that they're closing down the business. Um, and that's, that's kind of where, where it started from. And uh, it's just kind of evolved from there. Um, so we wanted to have a space not only to record, but then rooms for bands to rehearse and, and that kind of thing. Because we saw the amount of bands we met when that, when Rehearse Factory closed, who were desperate to find another space. And, you know, because for bands, it's really, it's really important once you start really like um, writing and uh, playing shows to have a headquarters, you know, a home base where, you know, you're not kind of watching the clock the whole time you're there, you know. 
Um, so for it to close down and for there not to be a lot of other options for, for monthly spaces, it was just kind of like, well, we kind of have to do it, you know, because no one else is doing it, you know, at least, at least not enough people to pick up where Rehearsal Factory left off. Uh, and then as it went along, you know, part of how the evolution came down to the buildings we were looking at and how we eventually landed in this building. Uh, it allowed us to kind of shape our overall idea and so it turned into rehearsal spaces, recording studio, and event space. Uh, we will eventually have a retail section and we've got a lounge area and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's been a matter of the, the, the priority at first was rehearsal spaces and then after we got that kind of sorted in terms of how we were going to do it, it was like, well, what else can we do with this space? And, you know, what, what would we as musicians like to see in a space like this, you know? So, which is kind of the nice thing is that when we have ideas where we're like, you know, well, it'd be really cool if a space had this, we can be like, well, you know, we have a space now. So uh, if it makes sense to implement it, now we can actually do those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah. But opening, opening a business in Ontario, man, I don't want to get yeah. too deep in it, but oh, it yeah. is really difficult. Yeah, I, I respect you guys for that, man. That's a, oh, and, I mean, hard. Yeah, especially after, you know, coming out of the pandemic and, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, but I mean, it's... It, any, opening any business is difficult, right? There's there's a lot, just a lot of, of challenges you face. A lot of challenges that you don't think you're going to have to face that pop up along the way. And, uh, you know, you just kind of, you know, you get through them. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, and like I want, I want to pick your brain a little bit on on the you know the live performances that you've been capturing and stuff like that. Well into here at, at Primal Note Studios and stuff like that. You know, I, I'm just gonna throw out some band names here. Just to, you know, G G G Gaijin Smash, Neo Bloom, of course Diamond Weapon, Cigar Club, uh, Black County, Napoleon, Sweet and the Big Band, Giant Triangle, etc. Now, like. I'm just saying, like, t tell me how that experience must have been, you know, like going through, uh, you know, like that many, you know, performances and just, you know, meeting all those, all those bands and, uh, yeah, like, I mean, what was, what, what, any, 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 like, fun stories or anything like that? Let, just let me, uh, let me know. Um, I, I don't have any, like, specific, like, stories or anything like that, but it was more just, um, things that kept kind of reoccurring. Um, so we got, when we started the channel, it was, it started off with, um, us doing a performance of, of our album because the, the bars and venues were so close that we couldn't do it, uh, live. So we thought, well, we can't tour, we can't do shows. Let's just do a video series. We've got some cameras that we have access to and we've got a space to record at. We can do full multi-track recording, all that kind of stuff. But once we finished that up, it was like, well, you know, Restrictions weren't so much that we couldn't be in the same room as other people. So it was like, well, we can't play at shows yet, but we can start bringing limited amounts of people into our space. So we brought, we brought in, you know, um, our friends, everything but the rain, uh, and then Diamond Weapon, and it kind of went from there. And um, something that, that we noticed after the first couple of them is uh, it was just kind of nice to have, like, this, like, private show of, you know, particularly... Like with Diamond Web, we've, we've known them for a while. We know their, their music and, and that kind of thing. Uh, we've seen them live a lot. We've played a lot of shows with them. Um, so to bring in bands that I only knew online or through, you know, uh, through Facebook groups and that kind of stuff, to actually bring them in, having heard their recorded music and then seeing them in live circumstance and seeing how they interact with each other and how they perform their songs. Uh, it was like just having a private performance every time we did it, you know, and again, since venues weren't open and we hadn't had the chance to see bands in so long, it was so nice to just see other musicians playing something, particularly musicians that we thought were, were super talented, you know, because like the songwriting that's, that these bands, that like every, every band we featured so far, like I've, I've found something, you know, either unique or um, they, they, like they have a, a big, a uh, supreme level of dedication with a lot of them, you know, where they have this uh, real drive to do what they do. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to see these live shows again before the chance to get out to venues. And then when the venues did open, we had we made that pivot. It kind of coincided with losing our space. The venues opened, so we our first one was at the Bovine with Lucid Smog Disorder. 
Um, and so that was again going from our little room having bands and then going out and seeing some bands around town and kind of getting back into live shows again. Um, it just kind of reminded us like what we, why we, why we did it before the pandemic, you know, like obviously after a pandemic, you're like really just happy to get up and do anything. But when you remember like, oh yeah, this is why I like this stuff. This is why I actually dedicate a large amount of my time, you know, to this stuff is, is the feeling I get when I'm watching it. So that was, uh, you know, kind of the, the experience. So I don't have any specific stories, just kind of feelings, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I get that, like, for sure. It must, it must have, you know, felt great to, like, uh, have, you know, a, a, a unique place for yourself, even, like, while creating room for other people and stuff. Because that was, that was what I liked uh, a lot about it. Because a lot of these bands, like, I'm, I'm going to say right now, uh, uh, Save Toronto uh, Music Venues and, and Bitch Fest, like, they were bringing a lot of bands yeah. uh, uh, here to Primal Note Studios. But I was seeing their their performances on um, at various venues, but also intermingled with the stuff that they were doing here, you know, on, like, social media and, like, Instagram and stuff like that, Facebook. And so it was cool to, like, uh, um, find out, like, that you, you guys had this whole, like, you know, uh, YouTube channel just with all, you know, these videos of these live performances there. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it looked so clean and nice for some of the recordings that I was just like, I thought it was a venue or something somewhere. And then, and then, but then I knew the whole time that you guys had your studio and stuff, but I thought you were doing it, like, just for jam spaces or something like that. So it was, it was nice to see that, yeah, you guys were, you know, creating a space for yourself by uh, uh, creating a space for others too, right? And, like, giving them opportunities to sort of network market and all that stuff man so it's a big ups big ups pioneer anomaly um yeah so now um i'm just looking through here we're almost done i believe uh um i do have a question here uh, uh well first let's take it easy for a second we here at 20 scene tube we like to relax we like to watch tv we do, we do. We like to play video games, okay? And so my next question for, for Pioneer Anomaly, because, you know, when I was listening to, to uh, Ag Algorithmic Existence 1 and 2, I was just like, this would be great on, like, you know, uh, anime original soundtrack or, like, a video game soundtrack or something like that. So, so this is your chance. Shout out your favorite anime cartoons, you know, video games with your favorite, like, original music scores. I mean, there's got to be some that stick out for you. I'm going to tell you guys uh, uh, w one for me, you know, uh, with, with an uh, amazing musical score would have to be, like, Metal Gear Solid, you know, like, stuff like that. It just just really sort of orchestral or, like, you know, very intense, like, like high production type stuff. But, like, I don't know, a, a Legend of Black Heaven anime, you know, that's that, that one. If you've ever heard of it, like, oh, man, you got to watch that one. I mean, oh... Honestly, I, like I understand where you're you're getting that idea for the music, but I I, I would say even personally for me it's uh, eat four grams of mushrooms and try to figure out how quantum mechanics works. <laughs> that's that's pioneer normally. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of neat things, but yeah, I would say that one. You know, that's why we've kind of ended off where we are. Is yeah. I I mean I. Yeah, don't, I, I can't see this band as like a playlist for a movie or a playlist for a video game. I could see it for, I mean, having your brain kicked in, you know? I mean, that's essentially what... Yeah. You're, no, you're, I, you're, I think, I think he, he's asking though which, um, what those like video games or movies yeah. or soundtracks that you dig. Yeah, oh, I was just that asking, like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, like your like, favorite. I thought you meant like inspired discs. No, no, no. I was talking about like Jaws Shit. or something, <laughs> like or like the soundtrack for Jaws. <laughs> you know, like that kind God of thing. Like... Damn soundtracks. Yeah. Uh, you know what? One of them. Oh, one of them. I, I would have to say just due to the fact of how they wrote it, not necessarily for the songs on it, but was the Spawn soundtrack. Because they took all these famous artists yeah, and yeah. then mixed them all up, kind of a little bit, and threw them together and took like Metallica's From Whom the Bell is Told made it electronic and like all this kind of shit and, and like my, my bad for the confusion there too like I, I was just saying that because like again uh, um, uh, algorithmic existence and stuff was uh, instrumentals right so like um, to like when, I, when I'm like playing video games or like you know whatever yeah. it's usually just not vocal and, and stuff like that so that's where I, I kind of got that vibe but Ben same question 
favorite uh, original soundtracks? It, it took me a few years to realize this with with uh, the way that I, I write music, but um, the GoldenEye soundtrack on uh, uh, Nintendo 64. Like I, I heard that so many hours of my childhood, and I never thought like that would be something that inspires the way I write. But there was one time that I was playing it again after years of of, of not playing it and having written a lot of music, and then started noticing like. Oh, I, I understand where I get some of this from. Okay, yeah, some of the synth stuff in particular, yeah. the synth sounds. It's like, yeah, no, if I if I could go back in time and be a soundtrack person, then I could totally write, you know, some, some kind of first-person shooter soundtrack, you know. Um, I, I don't know many modern games in terms of soundtrack. Like, I play, like, the most modern game I play is, is like, Fallout 4. Um, but I don't know, I mean, there's some original stuff in there, but there's a lot oh, of... Oh, yeah, they have all that swing stuff. That yeah, I don't know how much of it is public domain, and like, yeah. I don't know. So I, I, I don't know how much of their soundtrack is um, is all original. Uh, my dog is waking up. Oh, yeah, we, we, got, we, got, we got our buddy here. What's his name? What's his name? Uh, this is Indy. Indy, look at that. And now... We're going to ask the 20 scene tube, 20 scene tube, episode 12, Qu question for the excerpt, the interview excerpt, okay? 20 scene tube. Now, on October 17th, 2019, uh, Diamond Weapon and Junko Daydream played a show with Pioneer Anomaly, the first show I got to see you guys play. It was at Duffy's Tavern, okay? And, uh, and I covered it, I put it in, in 20 scene, uh, in print, I believe it was it was one of the first three volumes. You can check the link in the low bar. Uh, there will be a link to, to the page where you can uh, read the, the scans of the of the of the, mag, uh, the zine there, and uh, and you can you can um, see the commentary too. I, I wrote a little bit and threw some links in there to uh, to uh, Junko and, and and Diamond Weapon. But yeah, I mean, t tell me. Uh, any, anything you might have to say about that show, you know, those bands, I love those guys, Diamond Weapon, Junko, you know, tell us what it is, man. Yeah, that show was a total last minute show. Um, Jay actually wasn't there for that one. He was, I think, in Italy, I think? Or yeah, one of those two. He was on a trip somewhere, at least. Yeah. Um, and yes. Lou asked me, I believe it was like the day before, or a couple days before, because uh, a band had dropped out or something like that. And That's always a, the, um, like, Diamond Weapon has always been really cool with us um, for, for things like that where like um, not all like you know last minute shows went up but we, we book a lot of shows together but like it's one of those like they, they asked us they, and it's they, like they, they've been so good to us all the time it's like yeah no I can't I can't not do the show man like of course I'll do the show right so yeah we have what 24 hours or so to prepare sure why not yeah let's do it right um, and you know we're down a guitar player yeah no problem so we'll, we'll still do it you know we'll make it work um, and yeah so I don't, I don't remember a lot about that show specifically because we played a lot of shows in that, that fall there. I think we had, uh, we were doing a show every couple of weeks at that point, which for us at that time, that was, that was pretty, getting pretty busy. Um, but I do remember having a lot of fun at that one. And Duffy's, Duffy's is always, a, uh, for how, how small it is, it's always a fun place to play, you know, because uh, it can be at least a very intimate show when you've got a crowd in that room because they're right up, you know, they're, you know, it's not like, say, Lee's Palace or something like that where people are further away, you know. Uh, but yeah, I just remember having a lot of fun at that one, and uh, I always enjoyed watching Diamond Weapon play. So, I'm getting uh, getting the chance to get up on stage after them or before them or anything like just being on the same bill as them, you know, it's always great. Uh, do you have any commentary on it? I uh, you know I just remember having to to for us having to figure out how to do it without Jay and going, all right, so we got like an hour, let's do this, let's figure it out, and we did, and it was great. Yeah, I think we just we went through the songs that um, were where we could kind of get by without his parts because there we try to not not leave ourselves in a bind like that with our writing, but you know some of the songs require some intricate guitar work between the two of us, and if one of us isn't there, it's just not it's not the same. So we just kind of chose the songs that we could get by without them, and I think we kind of filled in with other stuff and uh, you know made it work. Right on, right on. Yeah, yeah like I mean that was that was a, a great show, like. To, from my memory, like um, you know, ev everybody did did wonderful. Uh, uh, but I remember specifically seeing you guys uh, with the synth, and, and and that was something I hadn't seen for about a year. I guess earlier I'd been at Lee's Palace and I saw Teenagers, 
play with with a little synth console or something like that. But I was always wondering. I was like, man, why why, why aren't people bringing bringing all the friggin' toys out to play and stuff like that, right? Like, I mean, this is, this is the twenty first century. So like, yeah, no. When I saw you guys, but with all that set up and everything like that, I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a good show. And it was. It was a Duffy slam night, I would say for sure. And, and Duffy's amazing, though. Like, I mean, imagine what the people playing pool must have been hearing when you guys were playing. Just like, whoa! Yeah, every time we're there, that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, and it was just, it's just you know, you you have to see Pioneer Anomaly live. I mean, it is just, it, it is just, uh, the sound fills the room. Amazing, like. Uh, and there's, there's no possible way that we could bring our entire sound to a stage. Say, say that again. Today. There's no, there's no way we could bring our entire sound to a stage, just due to the fact that there's never enough time to set it up, like just to get all the shit on stage that we just would love to be able. Like you said, with the idea of like, oh, no, no one brings out synths anymore. I would roll out in a fucking helicopter and. <laughs> yeah. just, if it makes noise, it belongs on stage. Right. Right. Yeah, if we had a road crew. Yeah, the, 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 the live setup that we would like you, you got to scale it back because we are a small band and we're you know we're not playing big stadiums and things like that obviously so like yeah we can't have all the things we'd like to have but yeah in a in a perfect world yeah we would fill that stage with gear oh yeah that's just kind of our thing yeah yeah no, th i think you guys do a great job at, at uh you know pushing the envelope and stuff like that right it's a, it's a refreshing to see you know and um yeah, like um, if if you haven't seen the video for Division State, go check that out. I think Pioneer Anomaly has a has a music video like a proper done up one, amazing too. I remember when that dropped in in uh, April twenty twenty. Good times, uh, uh, and yeah, like uh, so. I guess last question here. Any shout outs for the twenty scene viewers? You know, uh, uh, comments for your boy Peanut Butter, perhaps maybe a compliment sandwich or two. <laughs> Um, in, in terms of shout outs, I guess to kind of uh, echo back to some of the people we've mentioned, you know, shout out to Siegfried Meyer, you know, let, you know, giving us the opportunity to use the cat box really did a lot for us uh, in terms of getting our stuff recorded. And we also did actually do a video session out there that I've never really aired, uh, but it was kind of like a practice session. So definitely shout out to Siegfried and my dog's about to knock over the camera. Oh no! <laughs> shout out to my dog, Indy, for... Uh, Probably, always being a source of chaos. Um, and, and shout out to Diamond Weapon, because uh, they're always awesome. Right. And also, you know, thanks to you for you know, anyone who's trying to showcase local talent. And, you know, what I've appreciated about um, the, this interview so in, in general is you're not asking me generic questions. You've actually, like, you know, done some research on it, which is... I've, I've, the fact that you even knew we were, that we recorded at the cat box, I was like, okay, you've actually paid attention. Yeah. So it's like, hats off to you for, for doing that kind of stuff. Uh, it's I, I, Part of why we do we do a primal note is because we really appreciate the people who, uh, whether you create art or whether you want to shine a light on it or any of the, anywhere in between, you know, like we, we want to help support those people. And, you know, we really think that they, they do important things and we hope that we can also do important things with them. Um, do you have any shout-outs there, Matt? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a shout-out. It's more to really the music. I mean, and and like he was saying about, you know, you guys going out and doing the, the magazine and the channels and stuff is we, we, we put this, this business together strictly just due to the fact that this province do, does not care about artists. And honestly, it's lo it's lovely to see musicians and artists doing what they do regardlessly because I mean and 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 for audience members support them because you'll run out of content real quick like real quick because mm -hmm. I mean our country does not support it and uh, it means we're, we're all stuck doing it ourselves and figuring it out our own way and how and now kind of with primal note it's it's trying to give that resource footing to to really push the arts and entertainment, kind of, I don't know, give the community the resources that they've never had. What he said. Right? Yeah. Oh, we got Jay here. Hey, um, oh, oh. Uh, right. Jay, do you have anyone to give a shout out to? Hi. I know it's been a lengthy interview process for you, so. Yeah. Oh, it's rough. This is the guitarist, the guitarist right here. Stay with us for a few more minutes. 
Uh, Shadows? Um, let me think about that one for a second. Uh, Maynard. <laughs> Maynard oh. James Keenan. Cool, why not? Yeah, <laughs> Maynard James Keenan. So yeah, everybody. That 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 was it. There's a world of people out here making music, you know, making art, creating spaces for music, for art, and, and all the people, man. So get out there, enjoy it, support. You know what I'm saying? And and, and yeah, check it. Primal No, Pioneer Anomaly. Look at that. Bah!